Okay, this video is going to be on the, uh, if you watched the video previous to this, uh, this radio was brought in for a repair and alignment. Uh, the repair was simply microphone uh, plug wiring. So that's been taken care of. Radio transmits now. Uh, had hardly no modulation. <clears throat> that was not also, again, not the radio. It's the, uh, the microphone cartridge on that mic was also bad. So radio seems to be working just fine. Um, I said I'd show the insides. Uh, so just in case anybody's never seen the insides of a Browning Mark IV. So here we go. This is the transmitter portion of it. And I already had the top and bottom covers off. So if you pull the top cover, this is what this is what you will see. So pretty standard. Get on a little bit of additional light here. And turn the voltage down some. Nice thing about having a LED converted work light that runs off of a standard mobile power supply is I can just turn the voltage down on it. Oh, there we go. Looks fairly original. Can't say I see a lot of tinkering in here. Uh, other than some cat hair. <laughs> which that will get vacuumed out. He's not having a full restoration done on this. But like I say, he did say he's getting rid of this. So, you know, all the electrolytic capacitors are original. Uh, but otherwise, looks fairly untinkered with. Uh, tubes, I'm sure, have been replaced. Yeah, they look like they're have been replaced but uh, very clean the uh, transformer you can see a lot of times you get the transformers they'll it's kind of a good wear indicator because they're the first thing to rust or really not this black oxide finish doesn't really do much for protecting them <clears throat> and you'll see the cores start to rust but that's the top of it man like that's just really nice and clean so if we come over here to the RF shield portion I've already had it flipped upside down took the bottom cover off and I took there's four of these little nuts, little star washer nuts that hold this RF shield on. Get this out of here. And we can look in here. So we have three vac or four more vacuum tubes in here. Now some of you are probably looking going, well I see two more vacuum tubes there, where's the rest of them? These are vacuum tubes right here. These are called Nuvis Nuva stores. They're really teeny tiny that's actually a vacuum tube, believe it or not. So I've actually had people <laughs> that said they tested the tubes in here browning, and all the tubes tested fine, but I'm still having problems. I said, did you test, test the Nuva stores? And they're like, well, what's that? I said, they almost look like really big transistors. <laughs> you know, I'll tell them where they're at, and I'll pull them out. Oh, I didn't even know those were vacuum tubes. So yeah, just in case you're not familiar, those are vacuum tubes. Little teeny tiny ones, but they are nonetheless. So there's the underside, or the top, the top side. So let me get it flipped over and I can show you the underside. Some more, there is some visible work on the underside, so let me pause the video. Okay, so here we are on the underside now. Doesn't look to have, again, have anything really major done to it. I see some capacitor work here. There's been some capacitors added. Um, yeah, someone tacked. This is very sloppy. Even though he's not getting this redone, I will... And I'm not changing the caps. I am going to redo this because that's that's just not a good idea. What somebody did was is they put this capacitor in parallel with this one to increase the value. But yeah, the, you can see they just kind of bodged it on there. Got this piece of wire, so yeah, we'll we'll at least straighten that out. Um, so it's had a little bit of work done with capacitors increasing values, but otherwise, again, doesn't really look to have had. You know, much work done to it. Looks fairly original. Like I say, the radio is in really good condition. Um, now, one thing I did happen to notice, it almost has to work because the radio is working. But I scratched my head wondering how. I don't want to say it's a man. Well, it is a manufacturing defect, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get zoomed in close enough here Wait for the camera to focus. But if you look at those four diodes right there. One of them does not look like the rest. It's this one here at the back. It's actually flat. <laughs> I don't know if it might not show up very good in camera, you know, the angle. But it, it is, it's not round. It's almost like the, you know, it was formed while it was still, you know, 
I guess molten plastic it got squished it's almost like somebody stepped on it and you can see it's almost like it's crimped at the end and it's not done you know it wasn't done after the fact because that would have cracked the the diode it actually looks like it's you know that was the original factory so yeah there's a a flat diode I have to say that's a that's a first <laughs> but uh otherwise like I say looks pretty good under here nothing out of the ordinary like I say this cap here we'll get we'll get that taken care of that's obviously was added and obviously they didn't use red wire ties back then <laughs> so yeah we'll get that that secured a lot better and uh, let me uh, get this off the bench I'll pop the receiver up here on the bench so you can see what the inside of that looks like okay so here we are on the top side of the receiver section now and once again looks fairly original can't say there's anything really strikes me out of the ordinary um, now one thing that was kinda unique to this platform uh, was the dual crystal filters just the way Browning where they set this up uh, where most radios would have a single crystal filter this actually has two crystal filters so that you know does add to the expense of the you know back in the day it would have added to the expense of the radios and you can see actually the frequencies right here so five five point six four six five megahertz and five point six four three five megahertz so you know there's the, the separation you can see right here upper side band lower side band but uh like I say, it doesn't really look tinkered with. Can't say it looks like it's ever had any channel mods. And if you're familiar with the Mark IVs and 4As, if there was a downfall with the 4s, which this is, it's this can. <laughs> well, between this can and these two circuit boards up here, uh, uh, they didn't have a discrete or a single chip PLL when they came out with this radio, so or even just a couple chips. Uh, they did it with discrete components. Yeah, they a bunch of components. So there's a bunch. You know, you can look down in here and see there's, you know, even just on this back board, there's a couple you can see there, and there's even there's a lot more in here. But uh, and then there's even more ICs inside this PLL can. But yeah, they're a they're a section of serious grief for a lot of people. So you know. If you have them and they work, they're great. If they don't, yeah, they can be a bit of a nightmare of troubleshooting and trying to get them to work. So let me get uh, this flipped over. I'm getting out my bench cookies because there's no transformer to stand the back end up on, so I stick some of them to prop up the back side. So let me get her flipped over. Okay, and here we are on the bottom side of the receiver now. And the underside of this looks very original. Again, nothing sticks out, no red flags, looks like everything's pretty original, can't see where anybody's been tinkering with it. So, not unexpected, because like I say, the outside of it, you can usually tell how bad it's going to be in here just by looking at the outside of a radio. Usually if a radio, you know, looks like shit on the outside, unfortunately, they tend to look the same on the inside. Uh, this one looks very nice on the outside, and it also looks very nice on the inside. So, yep, we'll do an alignment on this and uh, see if we can get her get her all back into spec. And I'll probably do a little, tack a little section onto the end of this, show receiver sensitivity and whatnot, once we get her, get her done and put back together. So there you go. There's the, there's the heart of the Browning Golden Eagle Mark IV. Okay, so I've got the radio. Uh, if you watched the previous video, it was on the uh, on this radio, a Browning Golden Eagle Mark IV had no transmit, and we found that problem was in the microphone plug. That's now been taken care of. So uh, you've seen the uh, insides of it. Now I'm getting ready to do the alignment, and this is a tip uh, for those that aren't aware and <clears throat> unfortunately aren't good at reading instructions. <laughs> if you attempt to do the alignment on one of these yourself. If you have the equipment to do it, a lot of people seem to miss this word or this uh, sentence inside the service manual, but when you're doing the receiver alignment, when you're calibrating the manual tuning dial, the RF shield right here has to be in place. 
and I'm going to show you why it has to be in place. Because it does affect the uh, receiver drastically by six channels, as a matter of fact. So the radio's on. It's attached to the communications test set over here, which the microphone's in the way. You can see, turn this light off. What you can see is being fed a 27.205 megahertz tone or signal at 5 microvolts, 30% modulation. So when we come down to the dial, we can see that it, and now it's, I know it's kind of blindingly bright. Not much I can do about the intensity of the uh, uh, bulb there. So, but it's rated about 20 and a half. Okay. So you can hear it. It's, so it, it's off a little bit, but not much. Now, watch what happens. No more signal. Now, watch where I have to put the dial to get the signal back. The signal generator is still on channel 20. Where the hell did it go? Well, there it is. It's up. So we're at a little over 27. So we were on channel 20 and now we're on channel 27. So 7, 7, and it, that depends on what channel you start out on with, with, you know, the skip channels, especially at the beginning of the band. But, uh, yeah, so there you can see just removing this shield threw off the dial calibration by set a little over 7 channels. So make sure when you align... Yeah, it may seem stupid, but people <laughs> often don't read the instructions. And especially when you're doing an alignment, instructions are very important. Browning made sure that they put in the service manual to make sure this shield was in place. But I know people that have tried to align it with this shield off, and they couldn't. They said, I turned the radio on, and it's, all, it's, it's so horribly off. I said, did you align it with the shield in place? Well, why would I do that? Because that affects the capacitance in that circuit. Because the manual tuning dial is right behind here for starters. So, you know, just... You may not hear that, but I just holding it over top of that variable capacitor there throws it off. You've got all the inductors in there, so yeah, just a little tip. Make sure your shield's in place. Okay, the transceiver alignment is now done on the Browning Golden Eagle Mark IV. Uh, has great reception. It's hooked up to the communications test set over there, so the speaker output from the receiver is run in to the input on the test set have a uh, frequency set at 27.205 channel 20 with a 0 0.05 microvolt input signal level modulated the uh, one uh, kilohertz tone at 30 percent and we're going to be looking at uh, a synad measurement to see how good the receive audio quality is so what we're looking for as usual is a minimum of 12 db synad so we're looking at this far right hand meter right there and I'll turn the volume up. So you can see we have 13 point, eh, it's getting up as high as 13.78, but let's say the lowest I'm seeing is about 13.4. And at 0 0.05 microvolts, that's as low as that signal generator will go. So excellent uh, receive sensitivity. So let's try sideband now. Just swing this out of the way a little bit. Get reset. Switch the radio over to sideband. Okay, everything repositioned here. Say right about there. So right around 17. I'm seeing as high as 17.6, but let's just say on the low side, 17 dB synad at a 0 0.05 microvolt input level. So once again, excellent receive, and that's thanks to the you know one of the reasons the old radios had really good receive. If you remember when I showed you in there those really big crystal filters. Yeah, they have a lot to do with receiver sensitivity. Also helps with uh, adjacent channel splatter rejection and 
just all you know all over better overall uh, receive performance. So that pretty much concludes the receiver portion there. Let me just quick get switched over here. I could turn this. I actually leave that on. Uh, I can do it. Just yeah, kill that. Disconnect the speaker. From the receiver there. And of course the reason everybody wants a browning. It's a noisemaker. Oh, let's get AM, AM. We have our volume set here. Now, the browning ping. That's what that is known as. <laughs> It is a, as, as far as my understanding goes, it is a manufacturer's defect, a flaw, whatever you want to call it. It was originally put in the first Brownings, or accidentally stuck in, just a, a circuit design flaw. And they realized that, tried to undo it, people had gotten used to the noise, liked it, because that's kind of a signature. You hear that noise, hey, that guy was like, you knew back in the day, that guy was talking on one of the best radios they could have, a Browning. So, got lots of complaints. They put the, the ping back in. They eventually took the ping out because the FCC told them that was a noise toy. Noise toys are illegal. So, they had to go in and redesign the circuit, basically just remove the, the capacitor that's holding this. And what ha what is happening is it's basically in receive and transmit at the same time for a split second and you're getting feedback through the receiver from the receiver into the transmitter and that's where you get that that noise and that's why it varies you have to have the volume turned up and it depends exactly where because you can hear i'll key this a couple times and just turn the microphone just you know a little bit just change its position and you'll see how the the sound changes So, yeah, you can get all kinds of uh, different sound effects with it. All depends on where exactly where you position your microphone. Um, I've actually found it can also depend on what is behind you, uh, especially if you're sitting close to a wall. Now, if it's fabric, you don't have so much, but if there's a, you know, a solid wall with nothing on it, um, you can get some, basically, it's an echo almost. You know, the speaker comes out of this speaker, bounces off the wall. Of course, the microphone's facing that. You get a little bit more feedback, but uh, also greatly depends on your volume level. So, there you go. There's a Browning Golden Eagle Mark IV. Um, like I say, this is in very nice condition. You know, it's not... A mint radio, but it is, uh, you know, it's definitely got a few little here and there, little scuff marks. Now, these scuff marks here, you never see any of these, because these, this is actually that scuff marks caused by the cabinet when the cabinet's installed. Little rub marks along the, the edges here that you see. But, you know, it does have a few defects, but overall, really, really nice looking radio. Um, frequencies came, everything came into alignment, so uh, did not need any crystals. Matter of fact, uh, let's see, AM... Transmitters in AM. Uh, actually, I'll have to get that hooked up. Uh, swap over here real quick. Coax connectors. So, it is now hooked up to the service master over here, and then that output, scope output, of course, the power cable into the radio is in the way. So we're in channel 20, AM, key the microphone, and you can see 20, 27.205.02. Now you'll see a change in there, that's because that's frequency counter. As soon as I start to talk, it modulates the signal, completely throws it out of whack. But 27.205.025. So then that's pretty much across the entire channel spectrum, it's off between 10 to 25 on AM, which is well within spec, because uh, spec is actually, I can look it up here in the book. Just had the manual out. Uh, yeah. 
specifications for frequency tolerance on all 40 channels is plus or minus 0.002% total, so or tolerance. So 25 hertz is well within, uh, you know, because you got to remember, 27 meg is 27 million. So 0.002% of 27 million is one hell of a lot more than uh, 25 hertz. So like I say, very, very good, uh, as well as sideband too. Sideband, everything came in just fine as well. So there's a completed Browning Mark IV. So if uh, he does sell this, someone's getting a fairly nice radio. Um, probably the only thing I would do to it if it was my radio would be to change the uh, electrolytic capacitors. Um, you know, there's not a lot in the high voltage system in these. You saw the the couple big ones on the underside. Um, you know, there's two small can cap here, big can cap over here. There's a couple on top of the circuit board. Um, the majority of your electrolytic capacitor replacement time, other than the the two can caps, most of the time is going to be tied up in changing all these small low voltage electrolytic caps on the circuit boards right here. This is about these channel selector module right here about a pain in the neck trying to get this out it's just a maze of just like this bunch of wires hold the two boards in here together so but the other than that you know i always change out the high high wattage resistors but even those the ones on the top side here really don't get that hot it's not like a tram these couple that are on top the high wattage ones really don't bake like the uh the trams do but there are a few on the underside that uh, do get hot so i'd always recommend always replacing those so there you go, Browning Mark IV, Golden Eagle. Another squealer, back up and ready to run.